favorite weapons against you. Do you know two favorite weapons the enemy uses against the children of God? Guilt and condemnation. Those are two of the most powerful in the truths the enemy uses against children of God is guilt and condemnation. That's why he tells us to repent quickly, do it quickly, so the enemy can't bring guilt and condemnation to make you feel unworthy to come into the presence of God. Then if you feel unworthy, guess what happens? You will stop praying. You will stop reading your word. You will stop allowing God to use you. When that happens, you have taken yourself out of position to be clothed in the anointing, and that is what the enemy wants. Amen. People walking in guilt and condemnation will never walk in the anointing. Say, well, God, I, you know, I'm that. Is anybody ever messed up before? Yeah. Amen. I'm just asking. Yeah. Anybody ever messed up bad before? Yeah. In fact, if anybody in here, I'm, I'm bringing all of this. Yeah. If some of the things that you did were not covered under the blood, you would be ashamed for people to see. Yeah. That's what true repentance is. I don't have an ounce of guilt, a condemnation of what I've done in the past. You know why? Because it is under the blood. And the devil cannot come and use it against me. You remember that? No, I don't remember that. Remember what you said? No, I don't remember that. It's under the blood. That's why you've got to wake yourself dead under the blood because if you don't, the enemy will use guilt and condemnation against you and you will not walk in the anointing because guilt and condemnation is opposite of walking in the anointing. I don't feel guilty. All the stuff I did, because it's under the blood. I'm not condemned about it. Listen, if you want to give him guilty condemnation, he tried that with Jesus. He tried that with Jesus. Jesus said, he was getting ready to leave the earth. He said, he said I'm getting ready to, to, to leave. He said, but the wicked one is coming, and he will find nothing in me. Jesus said he will not find nothing to pick at in me, pull at in me. He will find none of that in me. So when the enemy comes and accuses you of what you used to be, yeah. just remind him that's under the blood. I don't have no guilt. Yeah. I don't have no condemnation. There is therefore now no yeah. condemnation to them that are in Christ. Thank you for finishing. Listen to this. Never stay away from God because of condemnation. Amen. The anointing and the Holy Spirit are still available. Yes. Don't miss out on them by listening to the devil tell you what unworthy, what unworthy worm you are. Just repent, get back up, and God will use you for the glory of God. Listen, I don't care if you messed up yesterday. Somebody said, because I need it. Get it under the blood. Amen. And get back in position. Yeah. And walk in the anointing. But you know what? If you pay attention to guilt and condemnation, you won't walk in the anointing because all you think about is what you did. Right. Can't believe I did that. Can't believe I said that. Can't believe I fell for that trick of the enemy. Can't believe. I want you to stop that. Put it under the blood and keep moving forward. All right. Now, are there consequences and stuff we do? God delivers us from sin, but do you know God does not deliver us from consequences? Let me say that again. God delivers us from sin, but God does not deliver us from consequences of the sin that we did. Like the young man went out, I told you about the young man, when I said with all these young women, came fell at the altar, y'all don't know, don't look around, ain't gonna get Try to figure out, come fell at the altar, that's what I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. I said, you don't repent of me. I got a hell of a heaven put you in. I said, you didn't ask God to forgive you. God forgive me. Uh, God forgive me. I said, God forgives you. Uh, I said, well, what's the problem? He said, they all pray to them. He said, they all pray to them. I said, how many was? He said, four. You know what I did? I laid hands on him. I said, God, please help me get four good jobs. <laughs> So he can take care of these children. And he looked at me like, ain't hey, God gonna wipe away? No. I said, so what you doing? You you playing seed, now you gonna be praying for crop failure. Yeah. I said, that ain't gonna work. Yeah. I 
I said, you better get some jobs and some good ones. I said, because God forgave you for the act. The act is under the blood, but the consequence is you get ready to have four children. Does God forgive our sin? Yes, he does. But consequences will happen. That's why we need to think carefully before we get involved in stuff. What are the consequences of my actions? Because God will forgive, but he does not remove consequences. Truth and consequences. That makes sense? Yes, sir. All right, I got it on there. Can I go for a couple minutes? Yes, sir. Y'all will hang around and talk anyway. I might as well finish close this out. Let's go to number five. If you're going to walk in the anointing, you have to learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. You have to learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. One of the most difficult things for believers to learn, and one of the most important, is this. If the power of God is present to heal or deliver, but your natural mind resists the method that God chooses to use, you can miss your blessing. And here it is. Two of the greatest hindrances to yield to the Holy Spirit is number one, pride. Number two, familiar memory. Very quickly, I want you to go to 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5, this is the story of Naaman. Naaman thought he knew how his miracle was coming, and he was full of pride. Listen to this. First, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 8 and 14. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king and said, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come down to me and shall know that there is a prophet. Keep going. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, Listen, hold up. He didn't even come outside to meet the man. That's it. I mean, when you walk in the anointing, you don't have to go outside. You just send the word. The word. Right. He didn't even go meet the man. It wasn't that he didn't think the man was important, but he already knew what God had told him to do. He didn't go outside. He said, Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall become again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. He didn't want to hear that. But Naaman was wrought, upset, and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his head over the place and recover the leper. See, he thought God was going to do it one way. But God used another. But Naaman didn't want to hear that. He said, I'm not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel, may I not wash in them and be clean. So he turned and went away in rage. Guess what? He was full of pride. I don't care what God has to do. I want God to heal me. If he tell me to go out there and rock, roll around in the mud, if that's going to be my head, I'm going to do it. But when you're full of pride, you don't want to do the way God wants you to do. Listen to this. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? All he telling you to go take a bath. All he telling you to go wash and be clean. He said, But, but pride and familiarity will make you miss your much. Because you think God's coming one way. And God's going to come a whole different way. And your pride will cause you to miss it because you say, no, God ain't going to come that way. That's why I don't miss nothing. If God can use whoever, whatever, however he wants to bring my blessing. I don't care if he uses a man, a woman, a child, a goat, a donkey, a chicken. I don't care what he does. God can use it. Just know that pride and what's familiar to you cause you to miss God using Amen. what he wants to use. Amen. Keep going. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he 
was clear. This and this. We don't have trouble yielding to God and the Holy Spirit when it's something great. But when it's something that goes against our pride, don't you know if God tells you to go to somebody, even in this church, that may not be on your fat, your, what is it, fat fire? You know, you just don't do it. I know this is going to surprise some of y'all, but some of y'all don't do it. And I'm not saying you have to. I'm not saying you're going to be everybody's buddy, because some kind of personality gets in the way. But if God told you to go to that person who really you can't stand, I know I probably shouldn't be saying that in church, but some folks can't stand some folks in church. They love the church, they love the word, and they come here because they know this is what they belong, but they'd probably rather offer that other person find another church. But if God came and told you, I want you to go into that person, I want you to take all the money you have out of your pocket. I want you to give it to that person, and then I want you to take that person out to eat. How many know that gonna work on some of our pride? Some of us gonna start binding the devil and trying to loosen. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. How about and, 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 and the Lord will let you do all of that binding. And after you get done, he said, You gonna do what I told you to do? <laughs> Because what you don't know, God can be using that person for your breakthrough. And you got to get over your pride and familiarity because you say, well, wait a minute, God, can I take sister so-and-so out instead of this sister? He said, I didn't tell you to take that sister. I told you to take the one you don't like. Amen. See, it's time to tell, be truthful. What was the first thing we talked about? Being honest and truthful with God. I know God knows who you don't like. Come on now. Right. Talk, Pastor. I try to get along with everybody, but guess what? Everybody don't get along with me. And there's some personality. My personality rubs against some other people's personality because I got one of the personalities. I, I, I don't like, I, I just don't like people giving me excuses. I, don't, I, I just don't go for that. I said, wait, what? You have all day? My personality is just kind of, I don't know what kind of personality you call it, but it's one of my personalities. Uh -uh. And sometimes it clashes with people. And I don't do it on purpose. So I'm not on some people's fake five lists. But if God told them to come to me, if God told me to go to them, I got to die to my pride. I got to die to what's for real. I got to do it because guess what? If I'm going to walk in the anointing, pride cannot be a place in it. Come on, Pastor. Teach. There was a preacher in this city that hated my guts. You know when people hate your guts. Yeah. I mean, they hate that deep. Yeah. Hate my guts. And I couldn't figure out why. I couldn't figure out what they like. What have I done to this man? Mm. But run me down and talk bad about me, talk crazy about me. And, you know, tell everybody that I live the alternative lifestyle and all kinds of stuff. Wow. And I'm going, what did I do to this brother? And I was praying one day, y'all. I, I can't lie to y'all. I was honest in prayer. God, take him to heaven. Get rid of it. Just take, take him out of here. I'm not asking you to do that. Take him to go with God. I did not care for this person very much. Because this person was talking about me. I couldn't understand why. I'm on my face. Oh, I can't lie to you. God just, this is time up. You know, what the And I told you now. Holy Spirit said, this is what I need you to do. We had a lot of speakers and microphones and equipment we weren't using. And I know he just started the ministry. He said, I want you to load all that stuff in your car. Cool. I thought I'd take this somebody that. Cool. I'm, he said, Holy Ghost will tell you everything. He take your steps. Because we told you all of it. You may not do it. He said, get the wagon folks, put the car, get your speakers, put the car. Cool. Somebody get ready to get a blessing. He said, now, I want you to drive over to that man. And I want you to take it, unload it. And I want you to give it to him. And I want you to tell him that you pray for his ministry. God can use him and all this kind of stuff. And right then, I started binding because I said, no, nah, that ain't God. That is not the Holy Spirit. I bind. That man hates me. That man's telling everybody that I live a different lifestyle. Hold up. I said, I'm not doing it. Then the Holy Ghost said, do you love me? Oh, I'm sorry, crying. You know, you don't want to do your lips, but for you. And so I'm driving to this man's church. And I get out, and I'm unloading stuff. And he sees me, and he's looking at me like, you know, 
with hatred in his eyes. And as I started unloading, I'm telling you, God wanted me to bring this and give this to him. And I'm telling you, as I begin to unload the microphones, unload the speakers and everything, I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you that the man broke down and cried and all that. The man took the stuff and didn't even say thank you. That wasn't the point. The point was that I was obedient to God, and I did it, and I prayed for those that distracted me. Usually, I prayed for those that said all manner of things against me. I prayed for him, but this is the thing. He didn't say thank you immediately, but some months went by. I got a letter from this man inviting me to come and speak. And when I talked to him, he told me, he said, you know what? I really didn't help. I was just jealous. I'm saying, jealous of what, sir? We all saw him together. He said, I was just jealous. He said, I, I want you to forgive me. I said, sir, I forgive you. But most, I don't just forgive you for you. I forgive you for me. Uh -huh. Come on, man. I said, because I don't want the anointing of God to stop working in my right. life. Right. Don't you know I love every last one of y'all, but I don't love y'all more than I do the anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, I do love you, but I don't hold a grudge of unforgiveness against you because guess what? He only cuts the anointing out of my life. Yeah, I love that. I'm sitting here mad at you, and you going on down the road, God blessing you, God using you, and I'm stuck right here because I got unforgiveness in my life. Uh-uh. I forgive you the moment you said what you said, you did what you did. I forgave you. Why? Because the anointing is so precious, and the anointing will dry up in a person who does not yield to the Holy Spirit. All he wants you to do is yield to him. And he'll lose you. I think I'm going to stop right there. And, and I think I'm saying, oh, Lord, the Holy Spirit will be saying on this subject. But listen, learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Learn to listen to what he's telling you. And guess what? If you don't want to do it, it's probably him. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to go to that person, it's probably him. What if you go to 